Hi again, this is Lino Tadros, and this is a continuation of the previous video. I've already used GPT-40 Vision to be able to test in my own lab in the prompt flow, and now I'm ready to deploy this and see how I can use it from the outside world, not just from the lab of the prompt flow inside of Azure AI Foundry. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, great. Let's go back in here. I tested this, the output was correct, everything is good. I'm ready to actually deploy this. So you notice all the way at the, top, at the top it says deploy. Let's click on that. There's a couple of choices that I need to make. It will come up with a weird name, that's okay for the endpoint name. Uh, it could be Lino project and whatever letters and numbers that will show up in here. You can change it, of course, to something that's more meaningful to you, that's fine. Also, the endpoint is one thing and the deployment name is a something else. So usually it will take the endpoint and we'll put a dash one, dash two, dash three, depending on how many deployments you're going to end up making based on the same endpoint in the future. Also, you have a lot of choices in different virtual machines in here. You can choose based on how much powerful, how many cores and how much RAM. It shows for me a four core with a 14 gig of RAM, 28 gig of disk, which is more than enough. It costs $23 per hour or actually 23 cents per hour uh, to be able to use it. Uh, so I'm gonna also use one instance only for this specific demo, but you can actually scale it however you want as well um, to be able to do that. All right, let's go ahead and say next. The next one, I'm gonna keep everything the same. The authentication type will be API key based. Um, we'll use the system assigned, all the stuff is good. The next one is the advanced setting for the deployment. I'm gonna actually use the environment from the current flow definition itself. I'm not gonna do anything special. We'll say next, and this is the end one. And the connection is the one going against the West US, not the East US one, because that's the one that has GPT-4 vision available in it, which is important as well. Okay, I'm gonna say next. These are all the things that the selling is going to do. Once you click on create, at this point, go ahead and get yourself a cup of coffee. <laughs> it's going to take between five to uh, maybe seven or eight minutes to make this deployment. Um, the way to find out if it's done or not, go again to the models and endpoints. Let's click on that. Oh, let me save all of that stuff as well, just in case I need it later. We'll say models and endpoint. Um, let's say models and endpoint. There you go. All right, so there is my GPT-4 from the West Coast, and this is the GPT-4.0 and the text embedding. Um, once this is actually starting the process, it found a machine to do this on, there should be a third section in here for the new Lino project with the weird letters and numbers after it. So I'm going to keep refreshing this until I see that at least it started, okay? I'll come back in here once it started. Doesn't mean it's done, but it's just started. I'll be back in a second. Ah, there you go. The endpoint has been created. That means if I say refresh there, no, not yet. Okay, it's lying. So <laughs> it should be coming up in here any second now. Keep refreshing that. And indeed, after a few seconds, this showed up. There is the Lino project in here. Keep clicking on refresh until you see this. That doesn't mean it's ready. It means it's in the status of creating. And this is the part that will take probably between five to eight minutes, depending on what's going on in Azure at this point. Once it has succeeded, we got ourselves a brand new endpoint that is ready for deployment. I'll be back in a few minutes when this is done. All right, and it did take about five to six minutes or so, but once you see the word succeeded, I'm in good shape. Let me go ahead and click on this deployment and let's see what now is available for me. First of all, I wanna make sure this is successful, that's great. But now all the way at the top, there is uh, different tabs, test, consume, monitoring, logs, this is great. Let me first go ahead and test it. If I say test in here, this is something that is acquiring inputs. Remember, our only input is the image. Ah, okay, well, that's going to be a problem. How am I going to supposed to uh, paste an image in here? There is no load file. Well, there is a trick here. The trick here is you have to go to the JSON editor. Notice it brings in a sample. It says topic, and then it passes Adam. Remember, I did not call it uh, image. I called it photo. And it's lowercase. You have to make sure it's exactly the same name you gave it in the prompt flow itself. And I called it photo. And inside of here, this is a, the tricky part. Most people are used to putting here a URL where the image is. So usually you will go to the like Azure uh, storage, create a container, and put a blob in there. That means my receipt.jpg file will be an image file that is publicly available inside of a container. Great, you can do that and then copy and paste the URL for where the, uh, the the file is in the container inside of the there. You can also put it in Amazon S3. You can put it wherever you would like, as well as long as we have a URL for it. Uh, the way I like to do it personally is not to actually include 
a, a URL, which I know can change. I want it to be completely self-contained in my application. So I usually put here the base 64 value of that image itself inside of the JSON itself. So how do we do that? Well, let me open up a free utility. Uh, you can There is a lot of websites out there that you can give it a JPEG or a PNG and it will give you the base 64. But I'm going to bring here to the screen a free utility from Microsoft called DevToys. I definitely recommend for you to have it. It has all the stuff that you use every day as a developer or a geek like me, like certificate decoders, uh, color uh, blindness simulators, um, cron expressions, date converters, these things that tools of the trade of everything we would like to do. The one I'm interested in is the one that says base 64 image encoder. Let's click on that and let's browse actually to our uh, image, let's say test, I call it test receipt, there you go. And immediately the entire base 64 will be available here for the image. Great, let's copy that to the clipboard and we will say thank you to the dev toys. It did its job and I'm going to go inside of this and I'm going to be pasting the entire base 64 inside of there. Now if I test this, I'm actually now making a call against my deployed um, server that contains that prompt flow that I deployed and passing it a photo, let me go all the way to the top, a photo key that has the value of this B64 of the image itself. So let's go ahead and see if it will work. We'll say test, drums rolling please. And if it comes back and give me the date, the total, the number of people were uh, dining and all of that, then we would be in pretty good shape. And it did a pretty good job with the base 64. Notice the, the November 22nd is correct. Dixie Cream Cafe is correct, 5139. It didn't still get the uh, the number of guests. It's supposed to be two by six. But again, the, the receipt was very crumbled in my pocket when I took a picture of it. But hopefully that gives you an idea of how to pass this. This is my preferred way of doing it. Instead of pointing to a file that might not be available in the future, this is now all self-contained. The final thing I wanted to show you is the consume part. If you click on consume, it has the endpoint where your deployed server is at. It has the primary and secondary keys that you can use for authentication. And then it gives you a lot of examples for consumption. It gives you JavaScript code, Python code, C-sharp code. And even if you'd like to see the JSON itself, maybe you want to use it in curl or something like that. So in my case, I want to use Python, for instance. Let's click on that. All the code you need, well, not all the code, 99% of the code that you're going to need to run this is available in here. Let's go ahead and copy that to the clipboard. And I would like to go ahead and open up a file uh, inside of a folder, for instance, in Visual Studio Code to run this code. Let's go ahead and do that. All right. I went and created a brand new folder called Test Vision. It has nothing in it at all. I'm going to create a brand new file inside of there. Let's do that. And we'll call it test.py. All right. And whatever code I got from the consume page in Python, I'm going to be pasting it in here. That's all the code that was given to me. There's a couple of things that are not done yet. First of all, the data. And the second one is the API underscore key. Everything else, including the URL for my, where my endpoint is for the deployed um, server is there and everything. So I don't need to do any of that stuff. I just need to give you the JSON for the picture and I need to give you the API key. So let's go ahead and get those two. First of all, let me save this file before I forget. And I'm going to come in here and we'll say, give me the primary key. I'm going to copy that into the clipboard and we will go into the API key and I'm going to be pasting it. And don't worry about you seeing this. I'm going to delete the deployment right after this. So it's not a big deal at all. I just wanted to, to see how it works. And then inside of the JSON for the data, remember what's the name of the key It's called photo. I called it photo in the prompt flow. All right. And now I'm going to come in here and we'll do exactly what I did before. I need to pass the base 64. So I'm going to open it up in here one more time. We'll say copy the base 64 and I'm going to be pasting it here one last time. And there is a lot of them in here. So I'm going to say control S to save all of this. All righty. Um, if you close and reopen a test by, it should be able to format it better. It's a lot, <laughs> the base 64, but I'm going to minimize this or collapse this so you don't actually have to see all of that stuff. Now I'm ready. Now it's all saved. How do I actually run this? So I'm going to come in here, we'll say terminal, new terminal, and we will go into the test vision and we'll say Python, Python, and we'll say test.py. There you go. Let's see if it will work. Drums rolling, please. And it's actually making the call from my machine in here. And look at that. Here are the requested details. The date is November 22nd. Dixie Cream. Um, total amount is incorrect. That's, uh, it actually got it to uh, uh, incorrect. This is not correct. So it's very, very crumbled, the image, I guess. <laughs> so 
Uh, but it, it, hey, it got the number of guests correctly this time. It's two, not six. So again, um, try to get a cleaner um, image of the receipts that you're working with. Otherwise, you're going to do this as well. Alrighty. So hopefully that was useful to you and you can understand really what we're doing at this point. This is very, very important uh, to have a pretty good understanding uh, of why you would want to actually deploy. Now I can actually do the same thing from my web application, from my phone application, from my um, React, Angular, Vue, whatever you want, making these calls into that um, server that I deployed. I can scale that server in AKS or in ACA um, and do whatever I want with it. Hopefully this was useful to you and I'll see you again soon in another video. Thank you. Bye-bye.